Welcome everyone to the Digital Marketers graduation party. This is our 18th cohort of the Digital Marketers Edge program. My name is Dan Gretsch. I'm the founder and CEO of BizHack Academy and am very proudly the co-lead instructor of this uh, amazing cohort. Um, I wanted to uh, introduce myself for those of you who may not know me. Uh, I spent uh, most of my career as a journalist and storyteller uh, and then transitioned in the second half of my life uh, to become a business storyteller, uh, a marketer working for a billion dollar company and several software startups. And now I have my own business uh, helping small businesses around the world market themselves. Uh, I'm a proud alumnus of Princeton and FIU, go Panthers, uh, and I'm a Fulbright Scholar in yeah. Argentina. Um, we, BizHack has partnered with some amazing groups. Uh, many of the folks you'll, uh, who are part of this cohort are uh, fellow alumni of the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Program. Uh, we were also named a top startup in Miami in 2019 in the Miami Herald Startup Pitch Challenge, and we've partnered with the American Marketing Association, Entrepreneurs Organization, and Knight Foundation uh, to accelerate our program and received awards from them. We've worked with many, many organizations, some of the top universities uh, in South Florida, some of the largest universities in the, in the country, as well as um, with a number of small business support organizations uh, to help them uh, bring digital marketing training to more small businesses. And uh, as many of you guys know, my uh, mission in life uh, and with BizHack is to champion the underdog so that they can transform their lives. And uh, there's no greater underdog, especially during COVID, than the small businesses that represent this amazing group. Uh, and you will see uh, life and business transformation uh, today in our graduation. So I wanted to introduce the amazing cohort 18 of the Digital Marketers Edge, uh, introducing the Targeteers. Welcome everyone. And I also wanted to introduce the amazing teaching team, many of whom have joined us here today to celebrate this uh, accomplishment. My co-lead instructor, Alex Oliveira, the CEO and founder of Predict Media a digital marketing lead generation agency that specializes in lead generation specifically for businesses with sales teams. We had five amazing marketing coaches, uh, Natalie DuPont, who's the new VP of digital strategy for Starmark International, one of the top marketing agencies uh, in Florida. Cheryl Cattell, who's a master certified life coach and has more than 20 years of experience uh, in digital marketing. Tatiana McDaniel, uh, the CMO of Happy V, a woman's e-commerce product. Tati is also a veteran of Republica and Zimmerman and some of the top agencies uh, in Florida. We have Ricardo Barris, founder of Me Group, uh, an agency and technology company that helps uh, small businesses with their marketing and with solutions for their marketing. And then Nathan Kruger, uh, a business owner and BizHack alumni, founder of Determination Pest Control. Uh, he was a standout participant when he went through the program, and now he's become uh, one of our top coaches and just a hugely generous spirit and amazing addition to the team. So today's program is we're going to feature some amazing case studies from the participants in the program. We have uh, such an amazing group that we have nine uh, presenters, uh, more than we've ever had before. I'm very excited to feature so many businesses in two action-packed hours. We're gonna have a, a certificate ceremony uh, where folks who participate in the program are gonna get their uh, virtual certificates uh, for the hard work of the last two months. We'll take a class photo. We'll be giving out the highest honor that we have in BizHack, which is the BizHacker Award. And throughout, we're gonna be giving out thank you gifts, uh, which the this is a tradition where the members of the class 
give products or services from their business to other members of the class as a thank you for um, helping them along their learning journey. And then at the end, we have a special musical surprise, care of the incredibly talented Ricardo Barris, and you'll guys all learn more about that shortly. So uh, Marianne, uh, we're gonna go through our first set of raffle items. Um, from Happy Licious, we have pick four jars of dough, and the winner is? Canela Bodero. Canela Bodero, uh, fabulous. Uh, for the Tobacco Barn Distillery's gift basket of distillery non-alcoholic products, the winner is? Ross Can. Congratulations, Ross. For two one-hour consultations, one for you and one for a friend with Becky and Ken at More Than a Score. The winner is Sarah Bess. Congratulations, Sarah. One personalized promotional product from Amy Williams of AB Unlimited. The winner is Amy Rieger. Another Amy. Congratulations, Amy Rieger. Um, Cloud Enjoy, a sampler of all of our Cloud Enjoy ice cream flavors, plus one extra of your favorite from Ian Taput. The winner is Jennifer Hudson. Congratulations, Jennifer. Don't let that go to your hips. We have a $50 Amazon gift card from Mosquito Joe of Greensburg, Johnstown from Amy Rieger. The winner is Allison McLaney. Congratulations, Allison. This is just the first round of thank you gifts. You guys were so generous with each other. We have one pound of chocolates from Chocolade from Adriana Shaked. The winner is Michelle Reese. Congratulations, Michelle Reese of History Miami. We have one free digipraisal from Digipraise, Allison McLaney. That goes to Cami Moore. Cami Moore. One hour marketing strategy consulting session with CH Consulting, Carol Heller. Uh, the winner is Adriana Schacht. Perfect, Shaked. Um, Carol is a very talented marketing consultant. She worked on behalf of her husband's business, uh, but you're gonna get a great value from that, Adriana. So I wanted to share, uh, thank you very much, Marianne, and thanks to all the winners of our first raffle. We'll have two more rounds of raffles for everybody. Lots of gifts to give away today. Um, BizHack over the past year has trained more than 2,000 businesses. We have given out since 2015, 790 certificates of completion. Uh, one of our first certificates was given to the amazing Tatiana McDaniel, who's now one of our coaches. She was part of cohort one. And we have today, we mark the 50th BizHack Live session. We started BizHack Live uh, as a response to COVID and we've done it pretty much every week since. And I just wanna do my hat tip to Lilia Posos. It was her idea to do this. We ended up winning an international award from the AMA for doing this as a service to our community. And it has become kind of a core of our mission to help small businesses. Many of you learned about us through BizHack Live uh, and then went on to participate in our paid program. Uh, and we are so proud to mark 50 BizHack Live sessions uh, to date. Uh, so congratulations and thank you, Lilia, for all of your hard work, your vision in putting this together. So let's get to the target tiers. Let's get to their case studies. These are the target tiers. They gave themselves this name and these are the amazing 30 businesses that make up the extraordinary cohort 18 of the Digital's Marketers Edge. We're getting close to 800 uh, businesses trained. Congratulations to all of you. You're gonna hear from a handful of these folks and learn more about their businesses and their performance. What we worked on with this group was understanding their business story and the six pillars of the lead building system. So it's a systematic process and approach to marketing their companies. They utilized this approach, this lead building system, and you'll see that reflected in their presentations, how they leveraged this system to build their campaigns. 
in the course itself, it was intense. We walked them through nine steps uh, from starting with building your target audience to the last one was analyzing their lead generation ad for learnings. This was part of a continuous cycle of marketing that we hope they start with us and continue now and ever more. And so uh, I wanna acknowledge the incredible hard work of everybody here today. This was a lot to do in two months and you did it and you did it beautifully. And these were your results. On average, you ran more than two campaigns per participant. You spent a total of $3,500 in ads while running while participating in the program, and you uh, have generated sales with a lifetime value of nearly $100,000. It's a return on investment of $28 for every dollar spent in ads. Now, there are some of you who are still figuring out your lead gen, no, no leads or sales yet. Uh, you'll see that in some of the presentations. Others of you uh, are working those leads right now and in your, you're in the process uh, of going on dates with them to eventually get married. But as you can see, sales were happening throughout this program uh, and we had a, a great return, uh, very close to our historical average of 29 to one. Uh, and we're very, very proud of all of your hard work and the bottom line results that you got. So without further ado, I wanted to introduce Scott Sanders. Scott, um, I'm gonna do a quick introduction to you and then you'll share your screen and start your case study. Um, Scott Sanders is a particular joy because he is a irascible curmudgeon who hates Facebook and had no interest whatsoever in learning to be a digital marketer. But what he realized, whether he liked it or not, is that in order for Tobacco Barn Distillery, his small business to succeed, he needed to talk to customers online. And unfortunately, he drew the, law, the short straw among his partners. And Scott, you took the bull by the horn, you did beautiful work with organic Instagram postings, and you had incredibly impressive results in your campaign. It's with great pride that I welcome you as one of our featured speakers, Scott Sanders, congratulations. And uh, I gotta say, um, you might not like Facebook, but Facebook likes you. Well, thanks, Dan. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. Yes, please. And thanks for the intro as an irascible curmudgeon. Uh, my wife will love that. Thank you very much. Okay, I'll start my timer. So here is Tobacco Barn Distillery, we've talked about that. This is the, the story of us. Uh, I'm a, I am used to be in the Navy and I ran the International Counter Piracy off Somalia. That kind of gave me the inklings of starting this up because I used to hand out bourbon uh, to all the international uh, partners I had here. It shows me handing one out to a Chinese admiral. And that just gave me the idea that, hey, this bourbon, that's a great way to bring the people together just soft talk them in there and get things done. And then in the middle there, you see my three partners or my two partners, Dan and Sean. The one on the right, Dan, he used to uh, distill in the late 70s during the fuel crisis. So he knew the processes, he knew that. And then on the right, you kind of see our, our tasting room and our distillery and our uh, Rick House. It's in a beautiful uh, agricultural community right on the Chesapeake Bay. In fact, my coach from down here, Barbara Sapato is on. So. Thanks for joining us today, Barbara. Um, here's the uh, the pillars of my Real Laugh campaign. My target audience, mainly drawing from Northern Virginia, the big population centers in Maryland around the DC area. And it, it was mainly men who's who I targeted. We ended up getting a lot of women coming in. And, and it's in between the 26 to 56 uh, year old, because we we're alcohol, we don't uh, target younger people. We, we offered them up a free bag of char from one of our bourbon barrels and got a little bit of traction from that. You'll see put out a, uh, our compelling message was, was about Father's Day. We, I did a call to action with a, um, on Facebook. Uh, as Dan said, I was not used to Facebook, but it worked out. We had a form. I've gotten one person to sign up from that, but I'll show you the results from it later because I'm not saying I'm the best on this yet. Uh, 
I had a whopping ad budget of almost $70. And you can see the impressions what we've gotten down to. Uh, to date, we've gotten $394. And by the way, I probably did this return on ad spend wrong. Uh, I think I got a B minus at the Naval Academy in Mass. So this is really about a 5.5 to 1 ROI if you work it that way. So basically, every 18 cents I've spent so far, I get a dollar back. And by the way, I have leads that are coming in at the end of the month. So this is kind of the gift that keeps on giving. So learning's the biggest ahas is that, yeah, Facebook is hard, but you just got to do it. Uh, and, and it's also to, to use the concepts from the Facebook platform on other platforms. Uh, there's a whole lot of pieces I didn't understand, like organic versus paid ads. The value of your networks is just immense. That, that really found that. I, we had a, a network person that came in last night and bought a personal barrel of bourbon from us. And that's at 15, that's $5,000 at, at a pop. So those networks are the same thing with uh, email lists. Uh, what's next for us? We're going to create a LinkedIn page. We're going to get into email marketing because I really want to leverage that. We're we're we have a bunch of YouTube videos, and we're probably we might think about doing a podcast because people like that, and uh, create monthly content for other partners. So working back and forth. So I can't thank. Alex, you enough. Dan, you enough. Marianne, you are the superstar of BizHack. So thank you for everything done. And Cheryl is my coach. You were just awesome for putting up for this curmudgeon. So thank you very much. <laughs> well, Scott, it actually was my honor to work with you these past few weeks um, on such a high quality product made with a lot of love and passion. I think it comes through. My favorite quality of yours, and there are many, is that, um, and, the, and this will take you far in digital marketing, and that is your ability to see it as the clay that it is, and your ability to make that clay into your own masterpiece. Congratulations, Scott, on a job well done. Well, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Dan, you're muted. Sorry, uh, Allison, uh, you and Michelle are going to go together. Um, Allison, you'll go first, and then Tati will speak for a minute, and then Michelle will go right after Tati, uh, and then Ricardo will speak. So uh, when Tati wraps up, Michelle, you'll go right next. Now I'm going to do a quick intro. This is a very exciting case study for us because we're going to feature two different businesses in the insurance industry who are both using Facebook advertising to generate leads, but in a very, very different way and to very, very different audiences with very, very different products. It shows how even when you're in the same industry, insurance, how different your approaches need to be based on your target audience and your irresistible offer. So without further ado, I wanted to welcome Allison McLaney of DigiPraise, who will then be followed by Michelle Rupp of NRG Insurance. Allison. Thank you. I'm going to take over the screen share. Hi, my name is Allie McClaney. I am the founder of DigiPraise, an online appraisal value update service. I look forward to sharing my learnings from my BizHack experience. For 20 years, I have worked alongside both of my parents and my sister as jewelry valuators for the insurance industry. While it is usually rewarding helping an insured replace their treasured jewelry, the birth of DigiPraise came out of the pain we saw when people were underinsured because their coverage was based on an old appraisal which undervalued their jewelry. One client, a widower, was saving his wife's ring for their grandson, and when it was stolen, he was paid based on a 1980 appraisal. The primary goal of my BizHack experience was to learn more about my customers. I ran my first ad for video plays. It was a 20 second video of me asking the viewer if they knew the current value of their jewelry. We targeted a persona pair of men and women over 40 years old who were married, divorced, or widowed. And we added some behaviors and interests that would be specific to homeowners and to owners of luxury goods. We had almost 2,000 through plays and I included that group along with a lookalike 
audience in my second ad, which included an irresistible offer, an e-flyer on three things you could do to keep your jewelry safe. Although we were supposed to run a second thumb stopping ad, it would have slowed things down for me. So I ran an ad with an image of a to-do list and asked my audience, audience to protect leads. So here's my funnel. In total with both ads, I spent $150 and I had over 10,000 impressions. My conversion rate on video plays was 30%, where my conversion rate for lead generation was under 1%. I have entered the 31 leads into MailChimp and I've already sent one contact piece to them about the importance of updating their appraisal value. So actually I feel like I had a 100% conversion rate on the 31 leads. Um, that was what I was going for, and now it's up to me to massage them into sales. I do estimate that I'll, in, a, in the end, I'll have about eight sales from these leads, which will create a sales revenue of $40, $400. So my return on ad spend was 3.75. So here are my biggest ahas for my biz hack experience. Number one, not so scary taking DigiPraise to the social media public. Um, I was definitely nervous about that. Ties into number two, as a perfectionist, I really wanted my ads to be perfect and knowing that they disappear after a few days gave me a lot of comfort and I think that'll be helpful moving forward in allowing me to test AB and to try different types of ads knowing that it really can't damage my image. I also found the exercise of the lifetime value of a customer, B2B, B2B to C, um, B to C, for me to be very valuable. It, it, it allows me now to realize that my focus needs to be on the carriers, the insurance carriers or the agencies and really go through those channels. provisional patent. Um, we continued to meet with agency owners and aggregators and insurance carriers to position DigiPraise for wide distribution. This week I took on a fractional advisor with extensive insure tech experience, which um, is super helpful uh, with our weekly meetings. Um, we'll continue to meet and vet jewelry expert valuators um, so we can contract out DigiPraisals when we're ready to scale. And finally, we are posting daily to our social media accounts and adding content to our website, which will help maximize our organic growth. At DigiPraise, our vision is to protect values and emotions. So I leave you with this. If you or a loved one have jewelry, please protect it and know its value so you can make the best decisions for you and your family. I'm offering my targeteers a 50% discount, which expires one week from today. So feel free to visit our web app, enter targeteers at the checkout. You'll receive your discount. So can everyone hear me okay? I know my screen looks weird and I have purple hair, but. <laughs> um, so if I could describe Allie, I'd have to say she's a combination of probably one of the most passionate people that we've had in, at least in my coaching team, as far as her product goes. She is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to jewelry and appraisal. And so her passion just shines through. I think we can all tell. Um, and then the other thing that I really loved about working with Allie is her flexibility. She's very flexible to receiving good criticism, to trying new things out. And so I think that with that kind of mentality of being flexible and being curious within Facebook, you'll go a long way with understanding more about your customers. And Allie definitely embodies that 100%. So kudos to you, Allie. She also, um, funny story, in her first ad, she wasn't sure if she was going to run a video of herself or a video of just some like predefined uh, video content. And I was like, you got to get in front of the audience. Like you have the passion. You need to put your face in front of the audience so they can see it and hear it from you. So a recommendation to everybody who feels comfortable in front of the camera, like Allie, you did an awesome job. I'm so proud of you. Thank you all. All right. 
so without further ado, I'm gonna hand it off to Michelle. Michelle, if you can share your screen. All right, take it away, girl. Michelle, you're muted. Sorry. Sorry about that. That's a typical thing. Okay, so I'm Michelle Rupp with NRG Insurance. It's so fun to follow Allison because the minute I heard about her product, I'm like, oh, girl, we are all over this. This is such a wonderful product for people. So, but in the meantime, I'll move on to us. I'm with NRG Insurance. Um, this was such a great, a really, really wonderful um, journey for us. So the foundation of our business was really about my dad saying it was a I'm second generation that this business was a vehicle for all of us to have a better life, our clients, our employees, and to have a joyful life with a lot of security and safety. So these slides kind of represent there's my mom and dad and my mom is here somewhere in the audience, um, quite a bit older, but I think she's aged very well, frankly. Um, this we have a lot of fun we do a lot of volunteer things we use our little nrg car to go to children's festivals etc it represents the fact that we really really work on our craft we really want to know what's going on always in our business so what we decided to do is to target tattoo studios we'd already been working with these studios because one of our insurance companies have given us a list of leads so i thought well let's just use this and our persona is Mike and Mackenzie. They have a couple of kids. And if you guys notice, there's tattoo studios now everywhere. And actually, there was an article in the paper yesterday that, that tattoos, tattoos are really happening after COVID. It's so interesting. So we targeted the state of Washington, 32 to 55 small business owners, tattoo artists. And our my, I decided that our free irresistible offer would be a white paper around three items that most studios haven't thought about in ways they're exposed because we want our personas to really care about their business and about insurance. So we did lead gen, we first did an awareness ad and then we did lead gen. I asked, you know, one of my things is always you learn by your mistakes and I had some technical glitches and went ahead and filed the first ad or went ahead and posted it. And then Ricardo, who is my coach, pointed out that we were probably violating Facebook um, standards by using a little boobalicious ad. So the second ad I learned from my mistakes and what covered her up a little bit more, but our call to action was through Facebook. And so I thought that the awareness ad in particular, when people would come and see that, because people in the studio, in the tattoo business, are obviously interested in tattoos. But I said in this slide, they came for the smut and they actually stayed for the insurance piece. So our our um, playthroughs were at, through plays were actually pretty amazing, I thought. And we got two, we've had since I, uh, I should have updated this slide, but we received two more leads this week, which is amazing and had kind of an old school, an old school kind of a combo, hybrid old school um, digital idea when somebody showed a client, our, our now client, a picture of the ad, they held up their phone and he saw it and called us. So, and he has four studios. So we're in the process of closing that and we're working with two more accounts. So this is just really fun. I had no idea we'd have these kind of results. My biggest learnings were to experiment, experiment, experiment. And that is so fun because, you know, this whole idea, I can't tell you how many times I said, um, this isn't the time to be perfect. This is the time to get it done. So thank you, Dan, for that. Just in general, that's a life lesson for me. I really want to keep planning the customer journey in B2B for us. We have a very long lead time. So don't stop before the miracle happens. Also remember that you want to speak to your persona, but you also have your own brand to worry about. That was something. Thank you, Ricardo, for that. Our next step is to get super clear about who we are, uh, just because that was fun to revisit after all these years. I want to do email campaigns. I want to really work on the customer journey and do a lot of more data analysis about how much our ad spend can be. And we're going to be calling on Ricardo to help us. So thank you, Dan. This was lovely. And I love our cohort. This was an amazing journey for me. 
Well, well, congratulations, uh, Michelle. Uh, you know, the, there's so much that I could say about you, but I only have 60 seconds anyways. I, I think the rest of the um, the cohort already knows. You know when Michelle is in the room, you know when uh, when you smile, that's going to be this kind of a contagion that she has, uh, you mm -hmm. know, she spread this, she spread it and she's really awesome. Um, and what a great pleasure it was to work with you. Um, you were fantastic. Yeah. I love yeah. how you have this experimental mentality. Um, just wanting to jump, you know, let's just jump and then we can kind of see what's going on because there is, there is a method to the jumping, right? Mm -hmm. um, so congratulations. I love how you got, you got leads. I mean, this thing works, right? But you have to know what screw to tighten and you have to know exactly what to do with, uh, with those screws as well. So congratulations. And my hat goes off to you um, for, for doing what you're doing and um, keep doing it. Keep rocking. Thank you. And Michelle, um, what do you estimate your total lifetime value will be if you incorporate the sales that you recently got? I think they're going to be another, I think the lifetime value of those will be another probably minimum because we do so much cross selling. This is all really, really, really conservative. I'd say these next two and our close ratio is about 80%. So I would be very surprised if she didn't close those lifetime value of those two will be about $20,000. It's so amazing. It's amazing with this Facebook ad, really 190 ad spend. Are you kidding me? So you know, you've created a monster in a way. I just have to, you know, take a chill because we have a lot of work to do behind the scene. It's fun. It's fun. Music to my ears. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. So next up, uh, we have another pairing. Uh, we're going to have two Mosquito Joe presenters, Amy. You'll go right after, uh, Amy uh, goes first, and then Sarah, you'll go right after her, right? And then at the end, Nathan will comment on both of yours. So Amy, then Sarah, then Nathan. Our next presenters are from the Mosquito Joe Pest Control franchise. We had an extraordinary cohort of six different Mosquito Joe franchises from around the country. Amy and Sarah are the two standouts of an amazing group, uh, both for their tenacity and for their amazing results. But what we have found here at BizHack is that working with franchisees, especially in the home services and pest control space, uh, has become a specialty of ours. Uh, and we love Mosquito Joe. Uh, Amy Rieger of Mosquito Joe of Greensburg, Johnstown, and Sarah Bess of Mosquito Joe of Northwest Florida, followed by their marketing coach, Nathan, who, uh, uh, Nathan Kruger, who runs his own pest control company in Las Vegas. Congratulations, Amy. Hi, I'm Amy Rigger, owner of Mosquito Joe of Greensburg. What, what, sorry to interrupt. If you could just click the presentation on the lower right, right next to the negative sign. Uh, if you look in the lower right, yep. Sorry to interrupt. Back to That's you. That's all right. Um, owner of Mosquito Joe Greensburg Johnstown. For those of you do who don't know, that's in Western Pennsylvania. And your backyard is our battlefield. Whoop. Growing up, my family spent endless time outside running and playing. And along with the fun, I still remember the countless mosquito bites, bear st bee stings. I was a barefoot girl bug zappers and the awful smell of bug repellent. I still see my daddy on the lawnmower with a tennis racket in his hand swatting the flying bugs away. And the days always ended with tick checks, anti-itch creams, and sometimes tick removal in tears. And years have gone by, my children have those same memories. My husband and I love having grandchildren to play outside, but again, history was repeating itself. And these are pictures of three of our grandchildren who are outside with Graham and Pap all the time. And one evening, my two-year-old granddaughter had a tick on her head. The tears ran down her face as Pap removed the culprit. There's got to be a solution. The tick population is exploding in our area and so is the danger of Lyme disease and other illnesses transferred by ticks and mosquito. Mosquito Joe is a company that people believe in and trust. The slogans are happy, making outside fun again. Stop smacking yourself in the face. 
and 100% satisfaction guarantee. This was our answer. My real life campaign was maximize your tick protection. Our target audience was focused on outdoor interest, aiming at both grill dad and outdoor mom with a radius from the center of our territory plus 40 miles. Our irresistible offer was free targeted tick service in both the spring and fall with the purchase of a barrier treatment package. I called my thumb stopping video tick collar. It was a mom putting a tick collar on the family dog to go for a walk. She looks around to see her family sitting with their phones and she's deep in thought. The next you see is the entire family outside with tick collars on for protection. The caption was making outside fun again, leading to our website tick service page for a form fill. My form fills were not as high as I hoped, but two form fills and two sales. That conversion rate makes me happy. And the lifetime values of those customers is approximately $13,400. My biggest aha was learning the importance of our business story and how it ties into every aspect of our mojo marketing and even our conversations. And the, the other aha was learning about the customer journey and how to nurture it from brand awareness to sale to referrals. What's next for us? Growth. I look forward to signing up more lifetime customers. And lastly, I want to thank the whole BizHack team, Dan, Alex, Nathan, and all the targeteers. This has been an absolutely wonderful experience. Grueling but great. <laughs> great. Okay. That was awesome. That's a hard act to follow. <laughs> so let's see here. I'm going to go here and this. So that's a hard act to follow, and we are Mosquito Joe of Northwest Florida. I'm Sarah Bess, and uh, Amy did such a good job. We have a different journey, so we get to the same place with a different journey. Um, again, I'm in Northwest Florida, and let's see here. This is my, um, can you guys see that? This is my business story, so a little bit different. I didn't have a yard growing up. I only had apartments. I had a single mom who was a biochemist and you can see her on the left, that's her today. Um, we moved everywhere and lived in tiny apartments with no yard. And I was always envious of those people that had houses and pets and families and yards because it was just me and her in apartments. Um, the good news was that she was a super strong influence on me and I ended up going into the Air Force. I was not afraid of travel. Um, but I always kind of wanted that home, that family, those dog, the dog. And we ended up, I ended up marrying my husband, Sean. He's still flying with the Air Force. And there we are together when we were deployed um, in, we were in Qatar and Kuwait. And then we have four kids now and we have the yard and the dog, but, and it's the home space I always wanted, but we live in Florida. So we have mosquitoes, they are thick. And when we first moved here, seven, almost eight years ago, we could not go outside. And you can see the picture there of my son gets these bites, especially the youngest of the twins. And it was really, really um, hard to deal with. So we needed a solution. Never thought I'd go from the Air Force to pest control, but it seems actually now like have, having gone through this course, like it makes sense. So I'm sorry, it's a little blurry, but here's the pillars. I did five different um, campaigns. The first um, was the, I wanted to just get the awareness. So the video views is what I wanted for the thumb stopping video. And I did a happy dog. Everybody likes dogs and happy ones. So he's happy because he doesn't have fleas, ticks, mosquitoes. Um, and I, it targeted mostly women because I did a lookalike of our current customer list. So we are, we are bound by our area in Northwest Florida by the territory I own. So the first one I did just where we own, I did a lookalike of our current customers 
and it performed really well. Now, mostly women watched it all the way through, um, but we had a lot of through plays. Very exciting with that. So then the next one, I went ahead and made one for men and one for women, the grill dad, the soccer mom. And I didn't do the lookalike audience. And I learned with the second one that the lookalike performed much better. When I tried to just do our area with interests, it, it didn't go as well. But in the long run, here's all the different um, ads I ran. So brand awareness, brand awareness. And then we got to the irresistible offer. Those are my twins. Um, they're 10 years old now, but when they, when I took that picture, they were about seven and they're tired of being in the yard <laughs> when they're getting bites. So we did our mosquitoes driving you nuts, buy three, get the fourth free. And I had two um, lead forms. One I did through Facebook. I had to go through corporate and get uh, the ability to be able to see those leads. So I went to the website. When we were on the website, we um, we ended up actually getting quite a, a great result. So now that corporate has set it up, I will go back to the Facebook lead form that I created, um, but it worked quite well with them going straight to our website with the request to quote. So super excited about that. Um, we ended up spending a total for all the campaigns of $309.46. We sold seven people and my phones will not stop ringing today. So I'm not running ads currently. I am i haven't even had time to do another one. But, uh, my office is like, if you run another ad right now, I'm going to. <laughs> so that's how good um, it is for us right now. But we have paused the ads for a second. We're coming up on Memorial Day weekend. It's a little bit insane. So we have spent $309.46 for seven sales. So I'm not sure if I got the equations right, but that's 1.68 return on our money right now. And in the future, we're looking at potential sales of just this year as 7,435. And in the future, we're looking at probably 35 to 40,000 for a lifetime value of those customers. So you can see the link clicks for the for the actual um, last ad I did and then the sales. So biggest ahas, the customer journey for me. I really, I know about touches. I know they see the radio or they hear the radio, this TV, the van, the signs, but I really did not fully understand the customer journey and all the routes that a customer might take. So that was my biggest aha moment and really finding the difference between a lookalike audience and then not finding your bubba makes a big difference. So, and I kind of relate to not being, I don't like to be on social media. I like to be in the moment. So having to get there, but what's next is I'm just going to stay involved on a weekly basis and I'm going to keep running ads. I think now I need to run a now hiring ad um, because <laughs> of the way it's going, but it's a good problem to have. So that's going to be my next step. I was talking to Nathan about and then update Google and Facebook often. And, and the bottom is just to test, test, test. So we're really excited for this season. And I cannot thank BizHack enough for everything that they've done um, to help our business. I, I mean, you spend $300 and, you know, this is compared to our marketing program, um, our mailer program. This is amazing. So super excited. <laughs> Nathan, you're up. Oh, okay. I'm just waiting for the cue. Sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, this cohort was awesome. Obviously, I got to work with all the, the Mojo franchisees. And so we also share that common interest of pest control. So we all we all had a great time, I feel like, and everybody on the same page. And, and uh, it was great. Uh, all the Mojo people, they work in their job, maybe another job, and then doing this uh, on the side, quote unquote, and, and still coming through strong. And uh, a lot of good results and I feel you know everybody was just kind of in the uh we're a little bit early on season right now so I think everybody's going to be ready when uh when that hot weather hits and everybody's going to hit their stride at the right time and it's going to be interesting and going to be awesome to see all the the great ROIs after this season with all these folks and I just want to say you know what Sarah was describing which is turning off ads is the ultimate control and freedom that you want as a business owner. You want to be able to run ads when you have capacity and turn them off when you don't. And that's the beauty of paid advertising. 
Uh, yes, you know, you, um, you have to pay to get the clicks, to get the leads, uh, as opposed to organic, which is, quote, free. But that control, that fine control that you have to turn on and off the spigot is extraordinary for a business owner. And in a time like we have right now where hiring is difficult, um, you have the ability to turn off the lead flow uh, and manage hiring and then turn it back on when you need more business. So congratulations, Amy and Sarah and all of the Mosquito Joe uh, franchisees for your successes. And uh, there's more to come. We're looking forward to continuing to work with all of you. Um, so Tony had a, uh, Tony King of Yoga Six had a conflict. So we're gonna go right to you, Carol. Um, and after Carol uh, is uh, Cheryl Cattell, uh, her coach. Carol Heller of Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, her husband's psychotherapy practice, is an experienced marketer who, like so many marketers, realized that the world had gone digital and had, in, to a certain extent, left her behind. What we did is caught her up in two quick months so that she can use her marketing superpowers as a consultant uh, in this new digital post-COVID world. And so it's with great excitement that we share Carol Heller of Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, an incredibly talented marketer with a case study of helping her husband, I hope he takes you to dinner, uh, but also uh, a great example of how the BizHack lead building system can be incredibly helpful for businesses in the uh, medical field, veterinary clinics, dental clinics. We've seen tremendous success uh, in those areas. Uh, there are some challenges too, as I'm sure she'll share with you. Carol Heller. Thank you. Let me share my screen. Oh, okay, here we go. So my name is Carol Heller from CH Consulting and my campaign was for lead generation for private pay clients for cognitive behavioral therapy. And my story is, goes as follows. I always wanted to help people, so I majored in psychology in college. But while in the program, I realized I could not separate myself from the, from the patients. So I pursued my MBA and worked with technology companies throughout my career. But now I have decided to get involved with the business side of my husband's psychology practice so that he can use his time in helping more clients. He has studied with top leaders in his therapy specialties and has helped hundreds of clients with tools and skills that can be used to overcome life's toughest challenges so that they can lead a healthier, happier, and more satisfying life. My campaign objective was, I had two objectives, a thousand video views and four new leads. And um, the one I'm gonna talk about was targeting women um, in about 50, 50 mile radius from Fort Lauderdale, age 35 to 60, who had interests in cognitive behavioral therapy, but were not counselors, psychologists, or social workers. My free irresistible offer was a free 15 minute consultation. I created two thumb stopping videos, one for the branding part of the ad and one for lead gen. And the compelling message was that cognitive therapy can help treat anxiety, worry, and stress. Um, the call to action was a direct link to a Calendly uh, appointment setting tool for people to set up the free 15 minute consultation. And the results were as followed. I spent $60 on two ads. I had 1591 impressions with a cost of thousand, for, per thousand impressions of $37.71. There were 16 clicks from both ads uh, at a cost of per click of 3.75, which is excellent. From there, there were two people that filled out the form even though they did not set up an appointment. And I'm estimating one sale. At a lifetime, with lifetime value, this is sales revenue of about $3,000 and resulting in a return on the ad spend of 50X. Additional results were 1,008 video views and the number of inquiry calls that we got was 350% higher during the week of the uh, branding ad than, than average. So this is phenomenal. Um, my biggest ahas and learnings. This is really, really hard. <laughs> Starting with defining the target audience. There's so many things to think about. However, getting a thousand video views with $30 is possible. Yeah, I mean, amazing, amazing. 
our coaches and teachers said, say it in 15 seconds. I didn't believe them. So my first ad was 30 seconds, but my learning is say it in 15 seconds and people in the cohort will know what I'm talking about. Uh, a second learning is my irresistible offer was not irresistible enough. People did, did click on the form and complete it, but did not schedule meetings. So I need a plan B and I need to test multiple offers. Um, interestingly enough, the traffic to Facebook was great as measured by Pixel. Um, 492 people came to the website, which for us, that's very good. There's a difference in the numbers from Google and, and Pixel, which I have to look into that more. And based on the results, which were very encouraging, uh, here are my next steps. I'm gonna come up with some additional irresistible offers, some around content and some around community. I wanna look, I wanna run the campaign again with lookalike audience and retargeting. I wanna use that tool that we had in class, the campaign analysis spreadsheet to actually define what the budget should be and consider increasing the budget. And lastly, we need to add an Instagram business page and augment our Facebook business page. And I wanted to thank Dan and Alex and the coaches and uh, the support staff, as well as the cohort for a wonderful learning experience and huge community that was created here. Thank you. Well, Carol, um, as a longtime friend uh, within Safima, it was a delight to work with you more closely and get to know you and to uh, learn about your husband's practice, things I didn't even know about you. What I did learn is how big of a heart that you have. And I saw a willingness on your part to lend a helping hand to one of your classmates um, uh, who was also in the medical field and experienced the same thing you had to overcome, which was rejected ads. So on behalf of Kevin, I'm thanking you and I would encourage you to consider a teaching role as one of your core strengths. Thank you for the opportunity to get to know you better and to help your family business. Best of luck to you. Thank you, Cheryl. It was so fun working with you. <laughs> Congratulations to our presenters. Um, I wanted to share with you guys the extraordinary jump in knowledge and confidence that you guys had as part of this program. So in just seven short weeks, you uh, went from blue to red um, and saw tremendous increases in all of our learning objectives and your confidence in those. Uh, anything above a seven is really considered to be mastery uh, of that uh, learning objective. And so on average, you guys really uh, did extraordinary work in growing your knowledge and your confidence. We also asked you to take a digital marketing test at the beginning and the end, and you guys had a whopping 22% jump in your concrete digital marketing knowledge uh, from the beginning to the end as a group. Um, many of you had bigger jumps individually. I'm so impressed and proud of your hard work and the concrete outcomes that came as a result. So we're up to our second round of thank you gifts. The first is Ross Can, a book, What Do You Need to Know Before Starting a Construction Project? And the winner is? And the winner is Scott Sanders. All right, Scott, for when you grow your distillery. Ballet Flamenco La Rosa has a gift card for four complimentary flamenco classes. Who's going to learn how to dance? So who's going to learn? It's Ana Margarita Martinez. Congratulations, Ana Margarita. We need to get some of those for Lilia, too, another dancer. Uh, a $50 Amazon gift card from Mosquito Joe, uh, Sarah Bess. And the winner is? It's Tony King. Congratulations, Tony. The shock and awe box, uh, certainly the best named gift of them all. From VTI Communications, Cami, Vanessa, and Tino. And the winner is? Carol Heller. Carol Heller. Complimentary Neuropath Quant, an in-person assessment with uh, Anna Margarita Martinez from Pathwaves. And the winner is? Anna Castillo. I'm a client of theirs and I can attest it's a pretty amazing uh, experience. One month of virtual classes with Yoga 6 from Tony King, and the winner is? 
Michelle Rupp. Michelle, get your yoga on. I saw Michelle's mom is here as well. Hi, mom. Nice to have you. Uh, thank you for coming and supporting your amazing daughter. Um, one hour strategic communications planning primer and consultations with Jennifer Hudson of Think Beyond, a $500 value. The winner is Betsy Cohen. Go Betsy. Betsy couldn't make it today. She has a graduation, but she is sending her happy-licious love to all of you. $150 OLS gift card from Ocean Life Studio, Canela Bodero. I am a member of this studio. It's right down the street from me. And the winner is? Becky Flowers. Yay, Becky. Get your workout going. So we're going to take a minute now and take a class photo. We're going to do both the... Um, the normal mugging, and then we're gonna do a little bit of a crazy one where we're gonna all do kind of Vogue hands. So um, we'll go ahead and take the picture. Then if you can stop sharing your screen so I can see all your beautiful faces. Perfect, thank you. So, okay. Armando, Elena, Vanessa, if you can turn on your cameras, that would be amazing. If not, you're not gonna be on this picture. So give me one second. All right. Okay, so there's Becky. <laughs> okay, so first the regular one. So one, two, three, smile, open your eyes. I'm gonna go with the next window. Open your eyes, smile, one, two. Awesome. And we can do a funny one. You made it. All right, for this one, have fun. Hold that pose, one, two. Digital marketing is awesome. Another one, hold that pose, smile, fun. Awesome. Thank you guys. Nice job, everybody. And uh, I'm looking at Armando, he has a flag and I don't know what that is, maybe his finger. <laughs> it's nice to see you, Armando, an alumnus from last cohort, uh, coming here to, to cheer you on. Hi, Armando. Thanks for coming to cheer Amy and the rest of the gang on. So glad to have you. All right. So this one is a special one for me. Um, I'm very excited to welcome Alex Oliveira, to uh, the ranks of certified lead instructors in elite group. Uh, we have a uh, county commissioner. Uh, we have the head of marketing for one of the largest real estate groups. Uh, we have Ricardo and Tati and Yoel. Uh, and now we have you, uh, uh, we have uh, Alex de Carvalho, formerly of IBM and Constant Contact. Now we have Alex Oliveira of Predict Media. Congratulations, Alex, and welcome, welcome to the BizHack family. Thank you. I'm in good company with everyone. It's been honestly an honor to go with you guys in this journey and I'm looking forward to many more. But it's one of those things where Dan, you and I talked about when you, you know, sort of strike a partnership, it doesn't always, you know, go right, but this one has gone right and it's just been fantastic getting to know you guys and it's a passion of mine to work both with businesses and my entrepreneurial journey but also in giving back in digital marketing. So I get to do both of those with you guys. So definitely looking forward to it. And thank you. You know, um, I wanted to share a little bit about you because you're such an extraordinary talent. You know, founder and CEO of Predict, a marketing agency that specializes in lead gen. You've worked with big Fortune 500 companies, but you've also worked with micro enterprises and small businesses, which we specialize in serving. You've been a digital marketing instructor at some of the most uh, influential and important accelerators in universities all around town for many years. And you've also have a long history of volunteerism, which frankly is one of the criteria that we look for in our coaches because we really wanna make sure that our marketers share our mission to transform lives. And if they're doing that in their personal lives, in their free time with their families, we know that you're the right fit for the BizHack family. And um, you're Brazilian born, South Florida raised and married with four amazing children. Um, I have here a 
African talking stick. And when the council elders would meet in this tribe, the person who held the stick was the one who spoke. And so uh, virtually, ceremoniously, uh, I wanna hand the stick over to you. You'll be leading the next cohort fearlessly. And I cannot wait to see the Alex Oliveira imprint uh, on the Digital Marketers Edge program. So here you go. Uh, thank, thank you. <laughs> thank you, guys. Absolutely. So now we get to celebrate the amazing participants of the Cohort 18, the targeter, Targeteers, starting with Adriana Shaked, Ali Deschino, Allison McLaney, Allison Lewis, Amy Rieger, Amy Williams, Anna Margarita Martinez, Becky Flowers, Betsy Cohen, Brooke Thompson, Cami Moore, Canela Bodero, Carol Heller, Ina Castillo, Ezra Carrias, Ian Taput, Elisa Rosal, Jennifer Hudson, Jonathan Diego, Ken Richings, Kevin Diego, Jonathan's brother, Michelle Reese, Michelle Freed, Michelle Rupp, the three Michelles, Raul Cause, Ross Can, I forgive you for going to Yale, Sandy Luth, Sarah Bess, Scott Sanders, Tino Hales, Tony King, Trisha Lewis, Vanessa Contreras, Vanessa Parker. And it is without further ado that we now give the highest award that BizHack has, an elite group. These are voted on by their classmates as the folks who best exemplify the biz hacker mentality and the biz hacker spirit. So the biz hacker course is a high paced, high impact program, inviting you to embrace new challenges, to work your tail off, to experiment and try new things, and to view failure as an opportunity to learn. And this mentality of constant experimentation, embracing the new, fishing with a spear rather than the net, being patient and perseverant, never stopping learning and daring to fail gloriously is what we celebrate with the biz hacker mentality. And we, for the second time in biz hack history have a tie. And so we have two presenters now uh, who are biz hacker award winners, Ian Taput and Amy Williams. Congratulations, each of you. Ian, you'll go first. I'll do a quick introduction. Uh, your coach will talk and then I'll do you, Amy, uh, as our final presenter of the day. Ian Taput of Cloud and Joy, a low calorie ice cream that is new to the market and taking it by storm is an extraordinary example of the never say die attitude of the biz hack mentality. Ian uh, had the challenge of marketing his ice cream, which is sold at stores uh, in different parts of the country to the folks who live in those areas to drive them to the store to hopefully get them to buy his ice cream. So he had to market to the ice cream buyer, but the sales were happening for the most part through the retailer themselves. But you will see that he did manage to sell a pint of ice cream online. So without further ado, the amazing, the tenacious, the hardworking, the hard driving, Ian Taput. Okay, let me share my screen here. Okay, can you all see it? Hello? Oh. Yeah, we okay. see it. Great, hopefully on a technical level, it'll work a little better than last time. Yeah. Okay. So whoop, let me actually go all the way back. Okay. 
So, hi. Um, and by the way, yes, it is a low calorie ice cream. So, uh, Jennifer, uh, as Dan mentioned, it won't go to your hips. So, so basically, just in case you guys don't know, uh, Cloud Enjoy is a unique, better for you dairy disruptor. That's the cleanest ingredient product of any healthy lifestyle ice cream with more appealing U USPs, unique selling points than any on the shelves. In fact, uh, we did a survey for one of our sales things and um, no other healthy dairy can make our games. Most even couldn't reach half. In fact, even we were a little bit shocked by how far ahead we were, actually. We thought some would come closer, but they didn't. Um, we're low calorie, low sugar, no sugar added. One flavor uses, does use raw unfiltered honey. Sugar alcohol free, low fat, low saturated fat, and cholesterol, reduced net carbs, gluten free, soy free, egg free, uh, corn syrup free, non GMO ingredients, clean label. We don't hide anything between behind terms like natural flavors. Um, we're ethically and sustainably sourced, and we're kosher. So Selena and I basically created, that's Selena there mostly, as you can see, and uh, some of our team, our CMO and our, our uh, social media manager. Um, Selena, and I, Selena and I created the formula for over a year after I recovered from a hiking accident that left me pre-diabetic from the injury, the medication and the inactivity. And both of us had an ice cream making hobby before the accident, actually. Um, although she had started to focus more on healthy cooking, um, even before my accident, but we kind of made an exception for ice cream. But once I recovered, um, we hadn't found anything that we really liked. So once I recovered, we decided to, uh, to take it to market. So as part of our commitment to do good when doing well, we also decided to make giving to our favorite charity, one we had actually done before we started the company, um, build it into the core of the company. So every single pint that's ever manufactured of Cloud & Joy, a portion goes to Heifer International, uh, which does cows and honeybees and helps with agricultural sustainability for underprivileged communities. Um, so basically we're targeting um, a growing market of health and socially conscious millennial and Zoomer consumers. But of course, everyone nowadays, especially after this pandemic, is really health conscious and they're all trying to lose the uh, quarantine 15 too. Um, and as part of, so um, I tested this assumption with some data mining on Facebook insights um, that he taught me how to do. And those interested in the big brand in our space were also interested in things like Fabletics and Quest Nutrition and did actually fit our demographic of women 21 to 55, because there's always what you think you know about your audience and what you really know about your audience, right? But we did test it. And then I further geo-targeted it to a 10 mile radius around every one of the stores, because as you mentioned, we do sell through stores. Um, my... Basically, our real world campaign is focused on a retail channel. And even though we do have a small direct e-commerce, it was very important to not cannibalize, but rather encourage the purchases at stores. So we're running another campaign outside that geographic area with a direct purchase order. Um, so after our initial awareness order, uh, awareness ad, the offer ad we made was that signing up will enter you into a $10 uh, gift card uh, contest um, in the Weiss area. And uh, the outside was $10 free off shipping, which we actually decided to take away the free shipping, make it $10. The real cost to ship this is $35, but we thought $10 is a good nominal amount um, because $10 free shipping on its own without it being a part of an offer wasn't actually encouraging sales. Um, so this was my sort of uh, the original thumb stopping video. Um, and this is the actual offer video. This is the landing page it went to. What we did is we actually followed up um, the sign up with a $25 extra offer that if you went to the store and you bought it, that you would actually be, uh, be entered into a, a contest for that. Um, so mapping out our customer journey and overlaying it onto our campaigns as we develop the messages and the flow interaction, which adds follow, which is on the what's on the thank you screen, the follow-up emails and the automatic drip nurture has been a great revelation because while I was familiar with the idea of a customer journey, like many things missing, uh, was the applying it specifically. Um, basically, we are at, well, I forgot to put my ad budget there, but the ad budget there uh, total was about 150 between three campaigns. Um, for the first awareness, campaign, we had a 4,984 4, impression. Um, we had a cost per thousand of 2067 with a playthrough rate of 6.5%. 
65.49%, which was actually, I think, pretty high. Um, a conversion rate from that was 1.38% of people who actually went through to our website, even though that was not the goal of the original thing. Um, the cost per result was two cents. Um, from there, on our follow-up ad, our conversion rate was 0.49% with a cost per lead of $1.05. Um, one of the things is we obviously have to, because we do b 2 b to c we have to take a little bit of a different approach in, um, in measuring our results. And so we did the quarterly sale. We're kind of thinking of developing a quarterly sales lift versus baseline through our retail channel. Um, because it's very unique in the grocery industry. They're very, uh, and because just because it's frozen, consolidated distribution is the only way to go. But interestingly, we did make $65 in uh, direct sales revenue because on our awareness ad, and uh, we basically were able through thanks to a Facebook pixel we installed, uh, which was the new thing, which is my time is up. Um, what we installed, uh, we actually, I actually know that they went from the ad to our bounce to our page to bounce to our store and actually made a sale. So that wasn't the need. Um, real quick, um, I know I'm running out of time. How we applied the biz hack learning now. Um, one of the things we did is a more important in, in the immediate future is we actually took the lessons we learned from BizHack, we actually took our, not only the learnings, but the stuff we used to apply those learnings, sort of quick and dirty, and also the ability to express what we were doing with those learnings, we actually made them into a slide that we were using in our pitch decks to our B2B customers, because it all has to go to the distributors. Uh, groceries only want one touch point. And this slide, which is a direct result, which was added as a direct result of using BizHack, has actually got us to a second round of uh, leads on our retail. In fact, um, one result has been a golden ticket win. We actually won the 2021 golden ticket from the second largest distributor in the United States, which means they're going to fast track us into distributors without having to secure retailers and help us push it. And only one company wins that an entire year. Um, we did the presentation. Um, I integrated that slide. I integrated some of the stuff we did for BizHack along with some of the innovative ideas I came up as a result of BizHack and we got this. In fact, it was such a big deal that they actually uh, requested that we put out a big novelty ticket and take it. So this is actually in Chicago at Pop-Up Grocer, one of the pop-up events we were attending. Uh, real quick, sorry. Uh, my big learnings, my biggest ahas were audience filtering and analytics and how to pipeline the customer journey. And one of the big revelations I think of this is how in 2021, even small businesses can harness the power, harness the power of big data to test audience demographics, psychographics, and interesting and, and interest in a way that was only available to big agencies with huge research budgets. I actually worked in an ad agency. I used to work Chris McBorder, Bogussi, Leo Burnett in the old school advertising before social media existed. I exited that industry. And trust me, research and all this stuff used to literally cost hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. And the fact that small businesses can do it now, and they helped me unlock that because I knew the concepts of these things, but I did not know how to unlock it in a sort of a new digital era. So the power of retargeting lookalike audiences and custom audiences, the power of mapping the customer journey and using big data to create a funnel. What's next? Uh, basically helping our retail and channel partners get to the product out of their freezer cabinets and into the bags and the spoons of their customers, capturing more distributors and retailers, creating an SOP and roadmap using our tools for automatic thing. Um, by the way, new creative concepts uh, based on what we typed and actually a little bit of Seth Godin. Um, how people want to feel because I actually, we did okay with our first set, but I actually think that being more aspirational, people don't care about the whole, they, people don't care about the drill. They don't care about the hole. They don't care about the bookshelf. They care about how the bookshelf that they made makes them feel right in terms of that. So we are actually, I'm actually revamping my uh, creative to focus on the heifer and also to kind of use the taste good, feel good, be good, do good uh, thing. And we're going to see how this works. If this works is going to be key on our packaging. And by the way, one last thing, um, I, someone, uh, Jennifer won it, but all of you guys, um, if you use the code bizhack on our site, we do do frozen shipping nationwide free for you guys. Um, you'll get $5 off the thing plus free shipping nationwide. The only caveat is you have to do six pints, uh, but just type in bizhack into the coupon code and it's there for you. Okay. That's it. Let me unshare. Amazing. Amazing. Oh, I have 
an endless amount of things to say about Ian, but I'll start by saying, doesn't he have a great speaking voice? Like <laughs> your voice, man, you need to be the voice behind Cloud and Joy 100%. <laughs> um, wow. Ian, I'm so, first of all, I'm so proud of you. You are a wonderful example of how this course is something beyond just Facebook ads. And it really opens the door for so many other learnings about your audience and opportunities within your own business. So I'm so proud you won that award, that gold award. Oh, amazing news. And yeah, I mean, Ian, I think we're probably all still blown away by his presentation because he did so great. But what I will say is that Ian had a very tricky uh, selling situation because the bulk of his sales don't happen online. They happen at the retail level. And so being able to understand still the value that driving traffic and driving awareness of your business or traffic to your site still offers, even though you can't track the sales uh, on the website, let's say, is still a wonderful, I mean, that's, that's the whole purpose of this course is how do you make this fit for your business? And Ian did that perfectly. So hats off to you, Ian, congratulations. You. Oh, and I'm waiting for six pints of ice cream yes. from Pot. Right, so now I'll give my yeah. <laughs> I will give my review. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, you know, Ian, I, I'm very proud that you were voted Biz Hacker Award winner because I actually ended up doing your presentation uh, yes. and I did a terrible yes. job compared to what you did. So I am uh, I think everybody understood the value you brought with your thoughtful questions throughout the semester, airing what many people were asking, but you kind of stood in front of the line and you asked it for them. So that's that's an act of generosity and everybody appreciated it. And Thanks. they voted and they voted for you as a result. Thanks. And actually I would have voted for Amy because I was really moved by her testimonial. So you guys are all get to hear that again, hopefully. You know, if you had voted for her, then she would have beaten you. Yes, uh, that would have been the case. <laughs> so everything works out. Um, before we get to Amy, I'm very happy to say that we have the amazing Tony King here. And so I'm going to do a quick intro. Uh, we do have a little time, Tony, for your presentation. And then Tati is going to uh, follow up with a quick. Um, so hang on. Tony King of Yoga Six is a portrait of perseverance. She had her business just cratered by COVID, like so many other fitness studios that had to shut their doors and frankly contest, especially in California with really stringent shutdowns, quarantines. And Tony has persevered uh, and uh, with her partner uh, has made Yoga Six uh, is, uh, still standing even after uh, a year and a half of, of shutdown. As things reopen, uh, Tony and her uh, partner are in incredible uh, position to take advantage of the COVID-19 and all of us who gained weight and really need to lose it with your help. Uh, Tony, I'm so glad that you came back and finished uh, and participated in the program with us. You're such a valued member of the BizHack family. Tony King of Yoga Sex. Wow, Dan, thanks. <laughs> That's some intro. All right, let me share my screen here. All right, wonderful. So I titled this Follow the Money because the reason I did uh, BizHack is um, one of my businesses, what I'm working on for this one, uh, Yoga Six, is a franchise. So we have a franchisor, they handle all the national marketing, and then we pay a media company to do our local marketing. But um, as we work with media companies, it's interesting is what I've learned now through this uh, program, is that they would throw terms at me to basically justify how much money was being spent, but not really, I wasn't getting the amount of leads that I thought I should get with pretty clear understanding that they knew I didn't know what they were talking about. So I decided I needed to know what they were talking about to find out if what they were telling me was accurate or if it was puffery to just have me keep spending more money with low results. So that's why I'm following the money. Okay, my business story, Dan gave me a great intro. Uh, my wife and I, Audrey, um, started Yoga Six. Um, we have another business, a personal training fitness business, and we knew we wanted to expand somehow. 
uh, but there's only so many hours for us. So we couldn't just keep taking on more clients in that business. We decided we'd open up something that would generate income without us working every hour of the day. All right. So we do this for our five kids. Um, we also have two cats. And as of two days ago, that little puppy. So just because I didn't have enough to do in my life, we brought a puppy into the house. So there we go. All right. So Yoga 6 offers a full sensory experience. You'll see we have LED lighting, a great sound system. And our motto is it's for everyone. It doesn't matter if it's your first day of yoga or you've been doing it 20 years. Uh, we don't care if you're big, small, it doesn't matter. Wherever you're at, we've got open arms for you. All right, so my real life campaign. And by the way, thank you Tatu because this presentation would never have gotten together and literally held my hand and walked me through step-by-step. Step. So we did the target audience. I was looking for someone who was um, not only into yoga, but a lot of the things that uh, yoga people follow, like a certain lo uh, local yogi, Jason Crandall. Um, a lot of them go to Wanderlust. Um, they also like the brand Spiritual Gangster. So I use that as some of my terms. Uh, my first free irresistible offer that I was just trying to go for views, um, that was a $20 weekly pass. And that was this video over here. Um, from there, we changed the ad to actually try to garner leads. So a $10 class pass, try out the first class for $10. Um, in the Bay Area, by the way, that's a heck of a steal. Um, normal class is 35 for drop-in. Um, so the call to action was click there for the $10 class pass. Um, to be fair, I did not build the landing page. Uh, my social media company did that for me. So it's nice just to be able to email saying, get me a landing page. <laughs> Um, the ad budget is I just spent $10 on each uh, ad. The first ad got me 10,294 impressions. The second ad, 2,568. Of course, it was going for leads. Uh, you can see the big variety in cost, um, 655 on the first one, 2334 on the second one. Um, the results, 460 uh, on the first ad. This, um, sorry, this is on the second ad, excuse me. Conversion rate. 14% uh, cost per result, five cents. That was actually just on the, sorry, dial it back. That was the first ad. So the first ad actually got some people looking at it. That was wonderful. We suspect that we got some boost in some of our other ads we were running at the same time. The second ad did not convert well. I haven't gotten any sales out of it directly, um, but you know we're in for the long haul, which is we keep throwing information out there on multiple channels. And so even though someone may click on one channel, who knows when they first saw you. So I'm still really happy with going through this um, uh, process to learn this is where my money is going and this is how this works. Okay. My biggest learning was the ands. That kind of blew my mind is that I don't just put in an ad for people who like yoga. I put in an ad for someone who likes yoga and lattes or spiritual gangster and whole foods. Um, you know, I've known about the Boolean method for decades, but had no idea that it applied here. I don't know why. So the social media sales funnel, I thought um, was brilliant. Another interesting thing, I've been in sales forever and a day and used to the sales funnel, but for some odd reason, never correlated that with social media, just saying, this is how many sales, how do I get back up to what do I do with my, my social media money to create that? To happen. So that working backwards has already proven effective. I had a call with my marketing um, team three days ago, four days ago, something like that. And they were trying to do that whole, well, the cost is high right now because of this, this, and this. And I was able to have a very distinct conversation to let them know, BS, this is what I want to see. Get back to me and tell me how we're going to achieve that. So that was why I took this course. And that was really wonderful. Um, and oddly enough, they've now decided to revamp the campaign. So, <laughs> all right. So again, that was my objectives. I'm moving forward to playing with some of my own ads. Uh, I've actually enjoyed trying to come up with that creativity and just see how they run. And I think that's always gonna be this sideline marker to always keep me on track of, okay, this is how mine is doing. How is the one that I'm paying for a lot of money doing and let's compare. If mine's neck and neck, we have a problem. 
mine should not be doing as well as the one I'm paying for. So I don't mind if it does, but I expect that what I pay, they should do even better than I'm doing. So thank you. That is my presentation. And I will quit sharing as soon as I figure that out. There we go. <laughs> Tony, oh, Tony. Tony and I go way back to the post-election chaos. That's when Tony was taking our course. So it was just after the elections last year. And I remember we, we made it to a few coaching sessions and then life happens. But we're so glad that you came back, Tony. And we're so glad that you saw this cohort through. And wow, I can't say enough about you. I mean, I know I say that about all my students. I don't mean to sound redundant, but the reality is you all are amazing. So everyone deserves their own pat on the back. Um, but for those of you that I got to work a little bit closer with, like Tony, um, I can't stress enough how it's so important to come into this course with what is your goal? And Tony had a clear goal. She wanted to learn so she can manage the team that was going to be doing the marketing for her. And she did exactly that. And so while some people's goal is to generate more leads, other people's goals are to sell more ice cream on their website or to drive those ice cream sales to a retailer, whatever that goal is, just come in with that goal clear and stick and stay focused and the learnings will come. And they did for you, Tony. So I'm so, so happy. Um, and I'm excited for you to, to put your team in check and keep them in check. <laughs> Thanks. It was actually quite a fun conversation to when you can almost hear the light bulb on their side and realize, uh oh, she seems to know what she's talking about here. And that was actually pretty exciting. So, yes, that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. So, we're so glad that you take that away. And hopefully, everybody takes that away from this course, really knowing and feeling comfortable talking Facebook ads and, and the whole process from the beginning of the strategy up the top of the funnel to, all the way to the end. So, Thank you. Loved working with you, by the way. I just want to say that Poppy has been amazing. Thank you. You know, whether you hire an agency or you hire someone on your team or you work with a contractor or you do it yourself, knowing this as a business owner is invaluable. And putting that investment in to building up the growth engine is going to pay off many times over. So congratulations, Tony, and to all of you. Um, Brian Williams, is there any chance you can unmute yourself? I don't know if you're in a position to. Um, if not, no worries. Amy, that's your husband, correct? And business partner? Hi, how are you? Hey, Brian, any chance you could turn on your video? Sure. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Nice. Figure out how to do it. Hello. <laughs> All right. Um, where are you? Oh, there. Uh, no, where are you on my screen? I don't know where Brian went. <laughs> um, oh, there you are, Brian. T-shirt says my, my wife, wife says no. no. I love it. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen. And then, Brian, I'm going to have you uh, say a quick word um, about Amy before uh, we do the presentation. So, um, what can I say about Amy Williams of AB Unlimited? Um, inspiring. In November, she participated in a free five-week course that we did uh, with the Village of Pinecrest. She attended every single class, including all of the repeats. The only person in more than a thousand people who registered who attended every single class. And I said to my team, I need to figure out who is this Amy Williams and why is she coming to all of the classes, including the repeats? Well, I spoke to Amy and what I learned is that this is a dynamo, a never say die, in just living embodiment of everything that BizHack stands for and aspires to be. Um, and I wanted to give her husband and business partner, Brian, a chance uh, to introduce his wife, uh, his life partner, his business partner, Amy Williams, Biz Hacker Award winner. Uh, as, uh, Brian, welcome. Hey, thanks. Wow, where do I start? Uh, well, we just passed 15 years uh, married and about 18 years together. And if I could sum up Amy in one word, it would be passionate. Um, she is very passionate about everything she does. 
from her relationship, from her, her, her marriage, her family, her choices in business, everything. She does not do anything less than 150%. Um, she's, man, the last few weeks, last six weeks, she's been burning the candle at both ends because she wants everything to be right, perfect, and done in any adjustment, in any order of those three things that you can come up with. Uh, she's an amazing person. I love her to death. And um, man, she's easily the smartest thing I ever did. And I have to be the dumbest thing she ever did because um, I totally married up and she settled. But uh, no, I'm good. I'm happy with that. <laughs> I, I personally have accomplished and done more because of her than I ever would have without her. So she is everything to me. So that's what I got. Amy, you're up. Is my screen able to be seen? Yep. We just don't see your face. I don't know if you turned your video off. I did. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. You have to turn it. You have to turn it back on. No, not quite yet. I need to get through this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on! You want us um, to give you a minute, and then you can. Yeah, you have to turn it on. I'm sorry. We need, we need to see your beautiful face. Oh God, I'm a mess right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um. Okay. Let me just get a drink of water. I set. I set her up. I'm. I'm such a jerk. <laughs> uh, this is Brian, by the way, one husband to another. That was beautiful, and I. I totally know what you mean about marrying up. Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> I got lucky. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Amy. I appreciate you. I appreciate you too, Dan. Okay. Oh, gosh. The story of how I slayed the digital marketing dragon, <laughs> part two. Oh, oh, let's see. When I was little, I was told that I had a neurological disorder and that I would always be different from everybody else. Doctors said that I would have limitations on what I could achieve. My parents had other ideas and raised me to believe that different wasn't always a bad thing. In fact, it was something to be celebrated. This belief helped me become a world-class athlete, a college graduate, a lawyer, a wife, and a business owner. Now I get to spend my days helping other businesses shine their light and celebrate their uniqueness by branding their company logos on promotional products to share with the world. And on April 30th, we launched a new brand, AB Golf, the leading resource for corporate branded golf merchandise and the subject of the Big Hat Cohort 18 campaigns. Pillars one through three, we set an awareness campaign with an objective of video views. Based on the customer persona, the core audience consisted of finding the locations in markets where there were going to be top of the tier golf courses and major business corporations that were domiciled in those markets because corporate executives love to golf. We chose places like Hilton Head Island, Palm Springs, Las Vegas, Pebble Beach, San Francisco, uh, Dallas, Los Angeles. The age range was 25 to 65 and we also zoned in on interests, food, industries, music, family, education. And our free irresistible offer was win a free golf gift for the first 100 subscribers to sign up on our website. Our pillar four was our thumb stopping video, Golf is Our Game. I wish I could play it for you because it's really kind of cool. And we intentionally kept it under 10 seconds because in our previous cohort, my videos were 30 seconds and a minute long each and they didn't have very good video views at all. So the 10 second mark seemed to work for us. Our compelling message was to retarget the through plays of the core audience from the first campaign and using the lead generation using the Facebook form. I also ran a third campaign simultaneously with the same video using the lookalike audience of the core audience from the first campaign and the objective for that was for video views. We also used the Facebook lead generation form instead of having it go to our website directly. The results, three ads, total of $130. On the first awareness ad, we had 29,613 impressions and the reach for that particular was 14,345 people. 
On the second ad, we had 2,941 impressions because we only targeted 1,630 people that played the video all the way through from the first ad campaign. That reach was actually 576 people. On the lookalike audience ad, we had an impression of 5,000, just over 5,000 impressions, and the reach was 3,845 people. We had 16, five, and 91 clicks to our website. So the winner was actually the lookalike of the core audience on our third ad, because we had 91 clicks to our website. We didn't have any lead gen form fills for the Facebook ad, but I intentionally set more fields to fill out because I wanted to make sure that these people were qualified as potential customers rather than just filling it out for the sake of winning a really expensive golf gift. Um, we had a decent video view through place, 289, 87, and 300. From the lookalike ad, we determined that we had two leads sign up and subscribe to our website. Now the average golf order is $500. So the two leads generate um, potentially $1,000 in revenue. And if we just take the amount of money that I spent on the third ad, which was $40, Tati and I figured out that the return on ad spend was 25X. The cost per lead will be $65 per lead if we actually use the total of the $130 that we spent. And we determined that $65 per lead when they'll be spending potentially $500 or more on an order is good math for us. Okay. The ahas, exploring different channels such as LinkedIn, email marketing and TikTok are going to be in our future. Drilling down on your customer persona for your ad audience is key. The specificity is actually king. Once we did that and I worked really hard on drilling down what that persona looked like, I began to see major results compared to my first attempt at Facebook ads um, in March. The lookalike audience of core audience increased the traffic. And lastly, try and try again. What's next? Well, dragon was slayed, enough said. I'm gonna take a vacation and reflect on the cohort 18 results and strategize a calendar for new future campaigns for monthly Facebook ads. Secondly, Definitely consulting with Dan and the BizHack team. It's obvious that we can't do this alone. I'm going to need to build out a team, either by hiring a fractional CMO to help build out a framework for the future and bring in consultants that can check in with us at least on a quarterly basis so that we make sure that we have a map for the year on what we need to do for our um, marketing campaigns. We're also going to set goals, slay them, and repeat. Now that I've improved my Facebook skills a lot with, with ads and I have nearly slayed the Facebook business suite, I'm going to be repeating this entire process with a brand new brand that we're launching in the fall called the Promo Lawyer. I want to thank Dan and the entire BizHack team, Tati, Ricardo, and all of my cohort classmates. I would not have been able to do this without you guys, especially Michelle Rupp. You have been my strength. And I want you all to remember that the leading resource for corporate branded golf merchandise, AB Golf. I'm Amy Williams, and I'm the CEO of AB Unlimited Worldwide. Yay! <laughs> oh my goodness. I wish we all had our, our, our mics on because I'm sure that round of applause would have been much louder. But Amy, wow. Um, I, my eyes are still red and I think so are many of the other people's. I've, I'm reading the chat as people are like, I'm crying, Amy, you have me in tears and goosebumps. Really, Amy, you are incredible. Um, I'm so happy that we got to meet. This is also Amy's second time taking the course as we explained. And um, we, didn't get to, we didn't get to interact in, the first, in your first round. So I'm so happy that you were able to participate in our labs. Amy didn't miss a single lab. She was always there asking questions, um, picking things apart, and that just proves how committed and how passionate, as Brian says, she is about what she does. And so, Amy, I just, I have, I have no words. I have no words. You're the best. We're so happy for you. We're so happy for your success. Can't wait for the new brand, for the new, um, what was it, lawyer? The promo lawyer. The promo lawyer, the promo lawyer. So we're going to keep our eyes out for that. But you're just world class, my friend. So happy for you. I, I had to slay this. 
there was no other option because Dan didn't want me to come back for a cohort 19. <laughs> and you did. You absolutely took advantage of every resource, of every lab, every class. And that really demonstrates when somebody's in it to slay is when you're taking advantage of every single possible resource that's provided. And that's what we try to do here. So, so glad that you, that you saw that success. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So we're coming to the end of the first chapter of our learning journey together. And Amy, I don't want to quit you. I don't want to, I don't want you out of my life. I've, it's been six months. It's been six months uh, of, of the Amy Williams show and I don't want it to end. And so um, it's really with great excitement, um, particularly for this cohort where I took such a hands-on approach to working with all of you that I'm gonna share with you um, a new offer that we designed specifically for all of you uh, that will allow you to continue your learning journeys. Um, and uh, we, we just want to we want to keep keep on with you guys um, and we call it the the biz hack insider program and what we were looking for is something that will keep this spirit and community alive uh, for as long as you want to keep engaging with us and at a really affordable price point so we have two uh, membership packages uh, that we're offering the first is a coaching membership, which is a twice a month coaching group similar to the labs. You'll get automatic registration and follow up emails with recordings and presentations for all of our BizHack Live webinars, free and paid. Uh, you'll get early access and discounts for new courses and workshops, including one that we're working on right now on LinkedIn. And you'll get to tell us what you want the future of BizHack to be. We're a young company. We're still figuring things out and we need you guys, we need you. And as a, as a coaching member, uh, you're gonna be able to tell us what's next. Uh, and we're offering that at just $49 a month, cancel anytime. If you want a little bit more, like a fractional CMO service, uh, the ability to revisit any class while you're a, a member, we are offering the Coaches Plus Classes membership, which in addition, to the coaching membership, you'll also get the ability to sit in on any live class or instructor master class that we hold while you're an active member. You can sit and watch Alex Oliveira teach the entire next cohort if you want, and you'll get a one uh, 90 minute quarterly digital marketing strategy session with a BizHack certified coach to help you map out your next three months um, because it's kind of got a three month, uh, it's two ninety four for the first three months, and then ninety nine dollars a month after that. So um, one of the things that we talk about in BizHack is the call to action. Right, all marketing should ask your target to take a decision, a yes or a no. And so uh, we're going to ask a poll uh, for you guys to tell us. Would you like more information about this? Is this something that might appeal to you? Uh, or no thank you. And there's no, uh, no judgment whatsoever and no thank you. We just don't want this journey to end. Um, we wanna build a, a new biz hack that is built on members. Uh, we wanna move from a transactional relationship uh, to one in which we are, um, working with you continuously and really growing your business. Um, it looks like we reset the poll. Would you mind uh, everybody answering it again? Sorry about that. Um, and we'll just take a minute here. We have 30 folks on the line. If you could all just take a minute and humor me here and take this one action. Tati, you can answer it. Everybody go ahead and answer it. We have 50% of you have done so. Um, good, uh, we're almost there. Uh, the poll is closed. Uh, we have 13 votes in. Thank you guys so much. Uh, so uh, those are the results that we got. Um, also wanted to thank you guys, and we'll follow up with you individually on that. Um, the applications are in are, are open now for cohort 19, 19 which starts June 7th. Uh, we are so appreciative of your referrals. Um, 
uh, and were uh, excited to follow up with them. We invited, uh, and some of them did attend today, which I'm happy to say. Uh, you guys were right at our historical average of a 29 to one return on ad spend. We've given out more than $135,000 to women and minority owned businesses. Many of you were beneficiaries of that. We have 12 seats left in the summer cohort. We really wanna fill them. We want another big, robust, amazing class like this one. And then we want you, uh, whether you decide to continue uh, with the membership program or not, please stick around for BizHack Live. Uh, tomorrow, Alex is gonna be doing uh, the BizHack Storytelling Workshop and Lead Building System. This is a great uh, opportunity if you wanna introduce someone to the BizHack approach. Um, and I'm really excited, Alex, for you leading that. Uh, Cheryl is gonna do a kind of little teaser session of her upcoming class that we hope to create on LinkedIn, which I know a lot of you are hungry for. Um, and she's gonna talk about uh, how to build up your business presence on LinkedIn. It's a fabulous presentation. Strongly encourage you. That's on Tuesday at 4 p.m. And now uh, our final round of thank you gifts and a musical surprise care of Ricardo. So AB uh, Unlimited, Amy Williams, 25% off her first three, your first three orders to all participants. Congratulations. CH Consulting, 50% off an initial consultation to all participants. A free one-on-one -on -one LinkedIn profile update coaching session uh, by Cheryl Cattell, Personal Legend Coaching. And the winner is? Amy Williams. Oh! <laughs> A $50 uh, Visa gift card from Determination Pest Control. And the winner is? Amy Williams. <laughs> oh, I think I see where this is going. Uh, a, a free one hour consultation. Uh, all of the, I guess all of the um, coaching gifts are going to the BizHacker award winners. Exactly. Got it. And is it, uh, I hope we get Ian in there too. So a free one hour consultation with me group USA, Ricardo Barris. For Ian to put. A $25 gift card for Purposely, which is Ricardo's, uh, uh, do-gooder uh, platform. That goes also to Ian Tiput. Excellent. And uh, speaking of the amazing Ricardo Barris, um, I don't know if y'all knew this, but Ricardo is a recording artist. His uh, name is Ricky Anthony. Um, and he has written a song inspired by all of you, arranged by Ricardo and Nick D., and available on iTunes. And so uh, without further ado, we wanted to give you this musical thank you gift from all of our instructors to you. Journey, there were many things you didn't know. How it's because of your openness to learn what you've learned. Yeah, and as you go, 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 letting the seeds of all the lessons learn to reap what you sow. Now, being afraid to tell and share to everyone you know with complete. Open us to learn, they too can learn. We lift our hats off to you, and you, and you, for doing all the things you need that to do. Instead of giving up for all you fall through and through, so proud of you. Yeah. 
Thank you guys. Um, I'm so honored. It's, it's, such, it's such an honor to work with all of you, to be inspired by all of you. You know, in my worst moments when I'm like, I don't know if we can do this, you know, maybe I should just go get hired by somebody else and make a lot more money and sleep well at night. Uh, I, I have a session like this and I'm inspired and I want to keep doing this for you and other business owners like you who are the backbone of our economy, who are the heart and soul of BizHack, and frankly, who have an amazing opportunity emerging as the economy loosens up and the economy grows. You guys now have the skill set and the mindset to take huge advantage of it. And so thank you for the honor of a lifetime, which is serving you uh, in BizHack Academy. And I'm so excited, Alex and the other teaching team to see what happens next. Feel free to unmute yourself and say a few words and we have a few minutes before we have to wrap up. Thank you everybody.